Greg Hill, I'm the co-chair for We Are Change Victoria. It's an honour to be here for the third annual Freedom and Solutions Rally. Yeah. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, hailing from Vancouver, British Columbia. He is a champion of freedom and liberty, Mr. Jamie Scott. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you to the organizers for allowing me to come here today and share some popular and unpopular solutions. The hosts of this event require us to bring solutions. Solutions arise when we establish our needs and then realize that those needs aren't being met, causing us to rightly identify that as a problem which demands the necessary solutions. So first we must establish what we need. Certainly no one man could compile a complete list, but I'm gonna outline a few needs today that may not be top of mind, but that are nonetheless vital if we wanna change the trajectory of our world. What do we need? We need to legislate honesty in politics. Recently, a police officer in Alberta made waves when he decided to run for city council on a platform of requiring polygraph testing for all of our politicians. His words, he said, police are held to a higher standard because the public expects so much from us to maintain the integrity of our system. But when we see scandals involving senators, people respond and say that they're not shocked. Voters are not shocked when they find out politicians have lied to them. So that's on us. We have to raise our expectations of our politicians. Every single police officer on this continent is subject to polygraph tests. Now with all the uncertainty surrounding these tests, one thing definitely is certain. Either the cops shouldn't have to take them, or all of our politicians should. The standards of honesty required from all of our public officials must be equally elevated to the same level. We need to provide our disabled returning veterans with a permanent lifetime disability pension. We need to rip up the new veterans charter, which was passed through the House of Commons unanimously by all parties working in concert to fight against their own troops. Tell us, Mr. MP, why the returning soldier who lost his limbs shouldn't have the exact same pension, at least, that you do. We need to maintain a free choice on flu vaccines. Just say no to GMO and to the NWO. We need strict laws surrounding food, water, and air pollution. Talk about GMO foods. I just want to quote Josh Steffler from last year. Because he does indeed see the biggest picture. He spoke about genetically modified foods, but he didn't debate the science or the health of these foods. Rather, he said simply, you want GMO foods? That's great. That's fine. I don't want them. But the problem with demanding government solutions to things like GMO foods is the same authority that you want them to have to say you can't grow GMO is the same authority to say you can't not grow GMO. It's the same authority to say you have to grow this. You don't have the property rights. The government dictates your property rights and demands what you grow. So be careful 
When people come offering solutions that are dependent on force, that are dependent on coercion, that are dependent on you surrendering your individual authority to a collective, to a collective that is designed to use force against our fellow human beings. Those are the words of a man who's focused. <laughs> we need to nationalize the creation of our federal currency and credit. Here, here. We need to retire our national debt. Here, here. And we need to stop killing. We need our MPs to have a free vote in the legislature. No longer can they be made to toe the party line or follow their master on every vote. This change can come immediately. Without the involvement of the voters, this can happen tomorrow internally from the MPs by simply summoning the integrity and the courage to get off their knees and tell their leader that they won't participate in this type of system any longer. Only an MP can do that. Call yours and tell him to start representing you instead of his party. We need to get our governments out of the vice business. Drugs, gambling, prostitution, a government that relies on the revenues derived from these destructive forces is already bankrupt morally. We need to end corporate donations to our police forces. Every tool that our police need should be provided by the government alone. We need to stockpile as a nation Gold and silver bullion. Gold is money. Years ago, Canada sold off all its gold reserves. And do you know who they sold it to? The answer is no, you don't. We need a moratorium on home, factory, and farm foreclosures for the duration of the global economic crisis. We need to create a civilian security council with the power to veto destructive legislation before it is signed into law. We need to create a Canadian Special Reserve Force, a legion of volunteers nationwide coordinated, on call, fully trained to assist first responders in fires, floods, and earthquakes. When the flood hit Calgary, we should have been there. And when the earthquake hits Vancouver, we should be ready. And we need to raise our measuring stick. And stop comparing our cities and our country to anything other than our own highest potential. And to assist us in all this, we turn once again to the press. It was the Pope who said, the means of social communication should contribute to the establishment of justice, freedom, and solidarity in the world. Media producers have a responsibility towards media consumers. Above all, they must truthfully inform. This is a massive undertaking. One so important that President John F. Kennedy wrote a speech entitled, The President and the Press, which he delivered to the press April 27th, 1961. I'm going to leave you today with JFK's words. They're on my website. You can hear them. He said, the very word secrecy is repugnant 
in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted, con unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. We, sorry, and there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it is in my control. It requires a change in outlooks, a change in tactics, a change in missions by the government, by the people, by every businessman or labor leader, and by every newspaper. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means to expand its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solon decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, that we look for strength and assistance. Confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Yeah, one sec. I'm just going to switch the tape. Okay. Just hold on.